I wanted to build a 1960s inspired supercar based on my dad's V8 engine. We've taken a little flack for the word supercar and I understand that if you compare this to the specs of any modern supercar, it's going to fall way short. But if you compare it to the performance of a 1960s supercar like the GT40 or the Miura, this is gonna hold its own. Now the engine had been sitting for decades and it was pretty cool because it started right up on the first try, but we're not leaving it as it was. We wanted to get it in and running prove that everything was going to work. But before we put this thing out on the road, this engine will make more than twice the horsepower it did when my dad was driving. But before it's back on the road and the engine's rebuilt, we first have to finish this body. And that's what we're gonna work on this week. Last week, we figured out the edge of the clamshell. We figured out the shape of the hip and to the door. And Tony got the rear hinge solid enough that this thing doesn't shake around. So the goal for this week is I'm going to go ahead and continue this front edge, wrap it across to the other side, and then Tony's gonna to continue on the back, and he's gonna get this thing even more solid so that we can open and close this clamshell in full articulation and not have any issues. So with having the clamshell parting line figured out, the actual edge of the clamshell is in the location and tacked in place. It's there, it still needs to be refined a bit, but it's there. The next step is to figure out this floating piece right here, because we'll have the door with a door edge, that's an opening and closing. We'll have the clamshell that opens and closes, but this piece right here is gonna be floating and stay stationary. So we need to come up with the parting line here that matches with enough room for the skin, as well as later on, a way to keep this floating piece in place. You keep calling this a floating piece, but actually this is the fixed piece. These are the floating pieces. It will look floating once it, if you open everything up, <laughs> but that one actually isn't gonna move. I hate it because he's right. <laughs> Everything that needs to be done in this small area is very overwhelming, but we're gonna chop it down to bite-sized portions, and the first thing that needs to happen is I need to fabricate the edge that the clamshell mates up to, and then figure out how the heck it's going to attach to the chassis, if even temporarily, so it stays in place. Just fixing what I messed up last week. My valley was a little off. You know how in Minecraft you pick up the experience points? If you don't know in Minecraft, your kid does. It sounds like this. That's better. Now we gotta make the next piece. <laughs> that was supposed to happen. Hey, that's on fire, I think. Whatever. Do I do I stop it? Dude, why do you keep failing me? You're obsessed with me or something. Stop. <laughs> this is the downside to tape, I guess, because uh, a clamp wouldn't do that. However, I'm out of Clico clamps. I'm gonna have to uh, call in some reinforcements for that. Most of the engineering here has been figured out. 
what we have left is final bits. So I've got to weld my supporting plates in here. We're going to stiffen this up with a bracket that attaches it to the longitudinal frame member. We're going to fabricate a strut that comes off of the bracket that I fabricated here that will come down and support this lateral support that goes between the two suspension components. So it's just a lot of bracing, gusseting, and welding at this point. Because like I said, the engineering is pretty well taken care of. In a very uncharacteristic move, I'm not going to overcomplicate this. And I'm just going to have a simple gusset that goes from here to here and that should lock it in. This is just too simple. I don't like it. I keep trying to like think of ways that I can make it more complex and there's just no good reason to. Use up some of these scrap areas. Very simple. That is I, very simple. Yeah, this is very uncharacteristic. I can't. Are you okay today, Tony? I can't wrap my head around this. You can put some dimple dyes. Should, should we make some like I, mini dimple dyes? I don't think I haven't already thought of that. <laughs> that works. When it's done, I don't think we need anything more than that. You know what? Slow is smooth and smooth is fast, but that's also fast too. So does that apply here? Simple is fast maybe in yeah, this case? Simple is fast, yeah. Oh, I hate saying that. That's not what we do. <laughs> Not much, but I feel much better about it now. Even though it's still pretty simple. Perfect fit, like a glove. Now it won't move, that's not going anywhere. The mail just arrived and there's a letter, package, just a package from Home Built by Jeff. Jeffrey, what'd you send us? I can't open. He can, talks can you help a mile me? a minute, but he can't open a package. Just, we just got a letter. We I gotta put my safety glasses on. We just got a, you know, Blue's Clues? No? No one else in the room knows Blue's Clues? Oh! There we go. These are knobs for the shop press. They're also 3D printed, which I do appreciate because I love 3D printed tools. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, thank you. Look at that. There we go. Now we don't have to like pull the handle out of here to do that. So we have a bit of an issue. The main issue is that this part line right here, the way it runs across this joint right here, is not the most opportune thing. It and was put in the wrong place, right? Yeah, Ryan? this joint's in a bad spot. <laughs> <laughs> not, not the parting line, the joint's in a bad spot. So the workaround is I need to weld a little patch right here to make this tube continuous. But I also, what I'd like to do is cut this tube back to have room for this adjacent tube to run in one piece, not multiple pieces like the clamshell side. But to go there, I need to figure out this entire zigzag that I've rigged up, because if I cut that, it's no longer attached to the clamshell and it will likely fall and move around. Um, so the solution is I've begun tubing forward here up at the hip, and I'm going to bring this up along the roll bar back over to itself, and then we're gonna make tabs, much like we have for the clamshell here, that will hold this targa section to the roll bar in probably two places, and then put a tab down here. That should be enough to keep this floating in place and not wiggly like this, and then we can keep moving forward. I was silent for all this, but when we were deciding it, yeah, it was mostly my idea, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> It was my idea, but then he helped me flesh it out further. And that's why we're, that's why we're a good we're a team. team here. We're yeah. a team here. We're a team. Yeah. He's holding a knife behind my back right now. <laughs> Stop. No, I'm not. So the uh, VersaCut CNC plastic table by Eastwood has a shape library on it. And I was like, I wonder if they have one to make standoffs for the tubing to go on the roll bar because I can't like weld it to the roll bar, obviously. Apparently that's a no-no in the whole roll bar community. I noticed on number 27 here, this one right here, that's like a perfect shape for a tube to sit into. And then I can do something to the back side of it so I can put a uh, hose clamp through it and clamp it to the roll bar like we did on the supports to the roll bar. Nowhere. 
So we added in these struts that attach to our hinge. It helps to triangulate and strengthen all of this and, and lock it into position. These will never have any skin on them like most of this tubing. So we want to reinforce the areas where they connect. So I'm gonna make a gusset out of, with this template that will lock both of these tubes into each other and this and support the span in between. And that's gonna make it a lot stronger. That to be just a little close. Dang it. So on a TIG welder, you use argon shielding gas, which I think many of you already know that, but if you don't, that gas is very important and keeps the oxygen out of the area so you can get a nice clean weld. I was having issues, almost like my argon was not flowing correctly, and it's entirely my fault. So on the tip of your torch, you have this collar, I call it, and there's holes that allow the argon to flow out and you'll have a cup around that that disperses it out to your weld. The insert right here is what holds your tungsten. And I had it in this orientation, which when you slide it in, you'll notice it's completely blocked as soon as I have that insert in that direction. But if I flip it around, that hole is no longer blocked and the argon can flow through. That explains a so, lot. <laughs> so yeah, I've had it backwards for a while because yeah, yesterday it was welding fine, but I was having trouble getting the tungsten to come back out. Let's go, oh, maybe that insert's backwards. So I flipped it around and then all my welds were terrible since then. Mine too. <laughs> Did you flip yours around also? <laughs> no, but I was using that welder and I was, remember when I was oh, grumbling yeah. and yelling all the time? Yeah, maybe read the instructions if you're welding. <laughs> that would probably help. Now I just need to make the hoop that goes through here. Finally, this bends very, ooh, I need to weld that some more. Yeah, there's a lot that needs to be done. Ah, I blew through the tube and it just like sprung away. All my gapping just got ruined in like 0.1 second. I'm not mad. I'm just a little disappointed in myself. Hey, Ryan. What? I need you to print me another bushing. What did you do? Well, I was getting ready to weld in my gusset and I thought, well, I'm just gonna tack it at the top so it won't get too much heat here. So I'm not gonna take the whole bushing out, put the needles in. Then I realized that this backside here wasn't welded and that was gonna be a lot harder once the gusset was in. So I welded this. Well, this is a lot closer to that bushing than this is. And so it got a little hot. That was a lot of words to just say you welded too close to the bushing. Right, but I had to explain why, because normally I... I will print you another, don't worry. I'm getting ready to cut some pieces out on this table. In addition to the fact that it needs some coolant in here, the tip's worn out, as is obvious by the angle that it's cutting, so I'm going to replace some of these consumables. So I've got the floating piece in location now. We have the edge of the clamshell defined on both halves. There's two options moving forward. The one option is to go up to the door, which is what I kind of want to do. However, this needs to be done on the other side of the car as well. And if I do that, this whole edge is defined the whole way across, which kind of checks off another step. So I'm gonna do that. But don't worry, since I'm in charge of editing this week, I'll make sure that the other side goes very quickly because you already watched me do this side. Why go into full detail again? So the first step on this side, it's a little different because we have the latch. Well, we I should say Tony has the latch tacked in place. It was a whole thing. We won't talk about that any further. He successfully located the catch for the door. So what I need to do is I'm gonna weld this 
uh, reinforcement he has here. Then we're gonna cut off the rest of the original Boxster unibody slash door jam situation going on here. Cause right now it's entirely in the way of the tubing that I need to form. That's not gonna go anywhere. It's in my shoe. All right, so these came out pretty good. That little guy will go there. This guy, little, little guy will go here. I just got to make a tube to run in between and then that will bolt and unbolt and support that. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna make a couple of pieces of U-channel. I knew I was going to have a clearance issue here with this tubing. I thought about grinding this, the bottom tab here and the top tab here away to give it that space, but that's gonna weaken these tabs. I could grind the top and bottom of this tube way so it'll fit in there, that will weaken this tube. I have some thicker wall square tubing that's too big to fit in this space right here. So I'm not gonna use that, hence my U-channel that I'm making now. Sometimes you just gotta use what you got. That's not going anywhere. And now we have room. It's tubing time. Reinforcements have arrived. This should be my uh, Clica clamps. I asked Eastwood for some, and uh, this showed up the next day. These will make all this tubing work go a lot smoother. I've done it. This side has now been copied from the other side and done better because once you know better, you do better. What I did was I ran this tube the whole way through and then I just kind of bridged to that tube, which leaves one final cut left, which is the tiny little stubby right here that's between the tubes. So we should be able to open up this MF pit. Oh boy. It's finally time. The clamshell has been welded. We have gusseting that Tony did in the back to reinforce it. I got the front parting line figured out and the floating pieces in front. Are you excited as I am? I'm more excited than you are and I'm it's more excited specific. than I was last time to do the front of the clamshell. I think we did so much more work to get to this point. I also think it's a little more refined at the front edge yeah. and I just, we gotta open it. Yep, well let's do it. Let, let, yeah. Let's stop let's talking it. about it, let's just do it. All right. <laughs> Look at that! It almost looks like more of a car when it's flipped back like this without all the stuff yeah. inside and you can see everything. Yeah, this is incredible. This is a huge step forward. Can your car do this? Probably not. Ba boom! We've no. got a rear clamshell. Our clamshell skeleton is complete. And functioning. Now it's time to figure out what the next step is. And uh, you'll see what that is next week on Project Jigsaw. Thanks for hanging in the shop with us.